We are here at the University of Maryland in the heart of College Park, a place full of diversity, wildlife, and dangerous territory. Home to heavy bronze turtles, seven world-class libraries, and the world's most odd squirrels. Over the course of 103 days, 21 college students from all kinds of backgrounds bravely embarked on the competitive journey of a lifetime, right here on this campus, for the sole purpose of playing Survivor, a game of competition, alliances, and betrayal. Some took the game in stride. You know, I'm thoroughly excited to play the game. I'm, I'm on my fourth season of Survivor right now. Really doing, you know, studying, hitting the books. While others were a bit more hesitant. I feel like I haven't been there for a lot of the things, so I wouldn't want to take someone's spot who actually really wants to be there. You see, I didn't know you were playing Survivor. <laughs> but without a doubt, Survivor La Plata produced passion. <laughs> friendship. <laughs> and dramatic moments that will last forever. In the event that a Hidden Immunity Idol is played, all votes cast for that person will not count. This is not a <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, what? It gave us grueling challenges, intense strategizing, and definitely some memorable players. There was Kyle, known for his deviousness, I want to be yeah, really devious, I know I sound like an asshole. Um, no, I, I want to entirely uh, run this game you know, the way a lot of the villains have run it in the past. There was Clark, who felt good about knowing so many people in the game. Manipulating such a negative connotation word. I have no problem influencing my tribe members. So, would you call it a mastermind? <laughs> yes, yeah. Some had grown up familiar with the show. I've watched Survivor before and I've always like had it in my mind that I was going to be playing an honest game. While others had not at all. I don't know how this game worked. I've never watched Survivor before. But each of the 21 players definitely had a lasting impact on the game that transpired. It was the ultimate challenge. 21 students from different social circles forced to work together to create cohesive tribes while battling the elements and each other. They needed to learn to adapt or they would be voted out of the tribe. In the end, only one remained to claim the winning prize. 103 days, 21 people, one survivor.
I'm um, sitting here on a beach interviewing for this game. <laughs> I would say that I am excited. I would say that I am very, I'm excited. I think this is going to be a fun experience. Um, just really excited to, to get started. You know, I'm, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna take a minute off. You know, I'm gonna eat, sleep, live, survivor un until it's over. You know, I, I would say my personality type just makes me the person that nobody really takes it seriously ever in any fashion whatsoever. So I guess you could say I'm going for the underdog status, more like the more like the, the just I don't I don't know what I'm supposed to say. And so the game finally started when the friends made a pact. We spent some quality, you know, three nights up here, and I, I really plan to stick with them, you know, through the merger, and uh, I think we can ride each other to, to make it to the top three. But in Survivor, things are never that easy. Who I don't trust, Danny Pacious. Danny, he's probably one of the better survivors. So in terms of making an alliance with two of the strongest players, it could either work out really well or it could work out really poorly. The stronger one is with Nick. Uh, I expect it'll be advantageous to myself to uphold the alliance with Clark. I don't know when he'll try and stab me in the back. And just like that, a game of mistrust and deception was underway. Many were unsure about how they would fare in the game. Do you think you will win Survivor La Plata? No, I don't. No. no. <laughs> but I think I can go far. But most had confidence in their chances to win. I like to say yes. Yes. I wouldn't take me against the field, but I'd take me against any other player. If I make it past this challenge and can like rebound from the first meeting, I think I have a shot. This game? Heck yeah. Does, shouldn't anybody who's doing this interview be saying yes? Yet it seemed that everyone had a different idea about the way to get there. The way this Survivor game is going to be played out is based off of who you, not who's going to perform better, but who people like. So I guess what I would try and do is just get on people's good sides. I'm trying to stay true to my original alliances and maybe screw over my later alliances later in the game. I'm not going to be running the show. I'm going to help run the show. I don't want to really put myself out there and be the one making all the command decisions. I'm not big necessarily on risk taking. So if I'm not 100% sure that it's going to work, I probably won't take the risk. For me personally, uh, to lie and manipulate, I can't do it with a straight face. So that might not work as well. As it would with, say, Danny Pacious. Uh, you know, I, I know a lot of people that are playing Survivor. I know some people don't know as many people as I do. Um, I think I tend to be a natural leader, so I'm not going to try and impose my will. It just kind of happens. Boss is probably, probably the best name in my strategy. I think I'm a good communicator, so I think that'll help me. I don't know how loyal people are to me, but I, I feel like I'm decently loyal. I'm not going to ever say, hey, we have an alliance. I'm just going to try to develop the relationship enough so that there's an understanding from their point of view that uh, we've got each other's backs. Yeah, I'm going to do what it takes to win and remember this is a game, nothing's personal, I'm not going to take anything personal, I'm going to try to remain friends and help everybody I see and come across. From the game's beginning, people look to identify the threats. I feel like Steph really knows how to play. I don't know if I'd want her on my hands towards the end, especially not after the merge. I want her gone by the merge. I think Nick is a threat because I could say stuff to him and he could be like, yeah, that makes sense, and then totally do something else. Like, basically agree with whatever I'm saying so I feel comfortable and then fuck me over. I know Ben pretty well, and I know that he's a big social person, talker, and so I really think that he will have some sort of strategy. I could have a target on me, similar to what Danny has. I think that if I'm the last two, that person will lose and I will win because I'm awesome. But everyone realized that the threats could come from anywhere. There might be some silent players that will emerge during the game because if all of us at the, like, the top of the rankings are battling it out, someone could just slide through. I mean, I know, Alex could get to the finals just because people like him. I think you need to be a decently strong competitor, a decently social person, and maintain the ability to stay under the radar. You need to be not right up at the top and not right at the bottom target-wise, pretty much for the whole way. On day one, the 21 players arrived at their first meeting, with only the knowledge that they would find out the tribes and meet the rest of the cast. Yet soon after they welcomed each other and learned the rules of the game, 
Their expectations were tossed aside as it was revealed that they would have an impromptu draft of their tribes. It scared the crap out of me. Because it was like, I don't know, I thought we were just like chatting about like teammates and... From a random selection of Pokemon cards, two captains were chosen for the two tribes. Katie for Tagi and Steph for Pagong. Each had to start the schoolyard pick by selecting a guy to lead off their tribe. Katie led off the draft by selecting Danny with the first pick, followed up by Steph taking another known alpha male in Clark. Thank God I didn't get stuck with Clark, he's a bum. Uh, I was pretty happy with my tribe. It's pretty cool being the second pick, first pick for Gong. Having him on the other team, I have no control over if he makes it to the merge or not, and I don't, I can't have him make it to the merge. So if he's on my team, he'll A, kick ass in physical challenges, which we need, but B, I can keep him close to me and hopefully manipulate people to get him out. Because he's friends everywhere, so it's going to be tricky to get him out. Then Danny surprised everyone by taking the unknown Nicola with the next pick. I mean, my tribe is great. You know, I have my, my pick, Nicola. Strong pick, fantastic volleyball player. Danny picked me and I was so happy. He was pretty firm about it too, so I kind of took that as a hint that he wanted me on the team, maybe wanted to work with me. Clark then took Victoria with the next pick, while Nicola selected Alan. Alan, I think, was a solid pickup. I'm worried about Alan, he's a really likable guy. Victoria took Nick with her next pick. Nick is probably the best challenger in Survivor. I'll just put it out there. And Alan took known athlete Cassie with his pick. Cassie scares me a little bit. I think she's gonna be. At least I remember her from flag football being tough players. Nick made Noshin the third girl of Pagong. And Cassie decided to take Doug off the board. Although he wasn't present, Noshin took Tyreek with the next pick. Wish I had Tyreek, but that's alright. And Doug drafted Meredith to Tagi. I have Meredith who's played the game before. I would have actually thought I'd be picked a little bit sooner. But I don't know the other girls at all, so like the guys do. I mean, I'm fine with it because I got on the tribe that I wanted to be on. Like that was the, I got on the one that I was really hoping for. Pagong collectively decided to take Colleen with the next pick. And with just four guys left, Meredith struggled. It was really awkward when it got down to like when I got picked, there was only a couple guys left and like Ben's giving me these eyes, like, come on, pick me. I'm like, stop it. But eventually took Alex. You know, I got my roommate Alex, so that makes things easy. Colleen made Shubal the 8th member of Pagong, and Alex took wildcard Grace. With just one pick for a girl left, Jordan took Flannery. Well, actually, watching the teams get picked, uh, I saw Meredith go to the one team, and I, you know, certain other people, I kind of wanted to be on uh, that team. I wasn't, I was accepted the team that I was chosen for, fine. With only two options left, Grace opted to take Ben, over Kyle, and Flannery was forced to pick Kyle for Pagong in the last pick of the draft. That's the only reason I want Kyle in the tribe. Actually, I really like my tribe because I know most of them, and the ones I don't know seem pretty promising. I like them. I didn't really know them too well, but I think we did really well. The tribes were then reminded that by not picking Jolene, they centered Exile Island, where she received a secret note and the chance to join the first team to lose a challenge. Well, it does suck that she's in exile already. Something good is on that piece of paper. I know it. The tribes were then told to select an official leader who would receive immunity at the first tribal council they attended. And Pagong quickly elected Clark. It was kind of cool because that means that they all kind of look up to me in that way and they... I mean, like I said, I was picked first and I was chosen to be leader, so that says... I hold some kind of respectful, or I'm like a respected member of the tribe, basically. But it's a lot of responsibility, so I didn't want to have that responsibility necessarily. I feel like Clark's going to be a good leader, but it's very sneaky. So I feel like towards the middle of the game, we might have to cut him loose. I'm going to get Clark out of the game. I'm going to get Clark out of the game so fast. As soon as he has that thing off his neck, I need to get him out of the game, because he's going to wreak havoc later on. Right. Sorry, Clark. Love you, Clark. But you're out. And after some debate, Tagi selected Danny. Meredith, as soon as she was like, oh, I don't want to be the leader, I knew right then that she was a dangerous player because 
Um, you know, she knows that the leaders probably get voted off soon, so that scares me a lot. Well, it actually wasn't too much of like a strategic thing. I was just thinking like time-wise, I didn't want to have to worry about setting things up, but I think he'll be a good leader. I don't think he'll be one of the leaders that, uh, that gets voted off because they're leader. I think he'll actually be really good at it. I wasn't trying to like throw him under the bus by making him leader. Like, I think he would be our best option anyway. Much to the chagrin of the players, the meeting was about to take a turn for the worse. Each tribe was forced into an impromptu vote where they had to cast one member of their newly picked tribe onto the other team. For Tagi, Ben was cast off to Bagong, but Alan received many votes that night. The first meeting was eye-opening the fact that nobody wanted me on their team. I don't know, that was a lot more intense and disheartening than I thought it was going to be. You know? Why are you voting Alan off? You guys obviously don't know Alan, like of course I'd want him on the tribe. Pagong turned into a battle of the sexes where the girls tried to vote out Kyle, and the guys turned on Flannery. And when I found that we were voting someone off, I kind of thought to myself, well, I don't really know that many people. I definitely knew that my name was going to be thrown around. And in the end, Kyle prevailed by working harder to earn the votes. A couple people in my tribe wanted to switch me over to the other tribe, but I was able to get enough people together to vote the other person off. Unfortunately, I had you know, I saw a block of guys in my back pocket. I'll definitely be targeting the people who try to send me over to the other tribe because they clearly say they don't want me or they think I'm weak or whatever. I don't know what it is, but uh, they'll have a target on their back definitely, and hopefully they'll be gone if we lose. Though some were not too upset about Flitter getting switched. Obviously I'm thrilled with that because I'm so happy Flitter's on my tribe. Well, I don't know a lot of the people that are playing with us, but um, they don't know how tight we are. I mean, obviously Danny and all of them do, but like a lot of the new people don't. So, and I think they voted her off because they didn't know her and whatever girl blonde hair. Like, I'm not even yeah. kidding. Like, just get her off. Yeah. I really wasn't disappointed that I was switched to the other team because that kind of I think will work out better for me in the end. Once we uh, kind of voted, like, had picked someone to like not be on our tribe in the beginning, like that that. That was awful, and I, I realized like this was gonna be like, you know, like a, this could be really bad. <laughs> like this, could, but I think from that moment on, like trying to like get a feel for where everyone else is, like more so than just what I'm thinking. It was good, but it was also it kind of it wasn't like dirty because no one left, but it kind of got down to business, so I couldn't get kind of scared everyone straight a little bit, like where we're actually starting right now. It's, it's getting intense. So.